Welcome back to the show. Welcome back. I know I am two days late, but blame it on Friday night football and also blame it on 104 degree heat. It's hot, Sha. It's hot. It's burning up, but we got a lot to cover. I'm really aggravated right now with the mainstream media. If I can dig up some stuff in a couple of days, I'm trying to figure out why People Magazine, Variety, Entertainment Tonight, and a bunch of others couldn't figure out, couldn't find out, couldn't investigate what I did. We got a lot of stuff to cover. There's been multiple lawsuits regarding this conservatorship. Not against, not, against like the, not against the family specifically, but to the movie companies and all that kind of stuff. I believe this is not the first. Got it. Uh, okay. Go around. So, so he had he had issues. Was was suing other entities. Then finds out that he wasn't technically adopted, but it's a conservatorship, and that's when he puts you guys in the in the crosshairs. Okay, so let's get to it. Molly Smith, producer Molly Smith, has formed Bell Pictures to develop and produce features and TV properties in association with Warner Brothers based Alcon Entertainment in a four year first look deal. Bell Pictures Project, an adaptation of the Bootleggers Boy, football coach Barry Switzer's memoir about coaching at Oklahoma University and the NFL's Dallas Cowboys. Alcon will finance with Smith producing along with siblings Thad and Trent Luckingbill, who brought the project in. That was an article from Variety. Okay, so let's move on to Deadline. Producer Molly Smith forms new production group, Bell Pictures. Molly Smith, P.S. I Love You, new production outfit, will develop and produce theatrical motion pictures and television properties in association with Warner Brothers based Alcon Entertainment. In a four-year discretionary first look deal, Bell Pitcher's first project is an adaptation of The Bootlegger's Boy based on football coach Barry Switzer's memoir, on and on and on. Smith remains partners with Hilary Swank and their production company, 2S Films. Okay, so we have another article about Miss Molly Smith. Third article, Blindside producer Molly Smith forms production company, signs first look deal with Alcon. So here we have another article about Molly Smith, the producer of The Blindside. I know you're wondering who in the hell is Molly Smith? Well, that's the same thing I was thinking. I keep seeing Molly Smith, executive producer of The Blind Side, article after article after article, but I had never heard that name. Well, I'll tell you who she is. She is Michael Orr's fake sister, Collins. That's her sister-in-law. That's her husband's sister. And the company Alcon is funded by their daddy. The founder of FedEx. That's what Alcon. So when SJ Tui sits up on Barstool and acts like he doesn't know what Alcon is, he full well knows that his sisters, husband, father, and, you know, and sister, sister-in-law, that they got the movie. And all of this, I mean, you should just read these articles if you're ever bored talking about she struck a deal with daddy she's got a first look with this you know it's all Hollywood speak I get it but the movie lands into the hands of Alcorn and SJ is saying we didn't do anything wrong so no matter what happened with that movie the writing of the book Michael Lewis who was Sean to his childhood friend from New Orleans wrote the book and then they get his daughter's you know at that time boyfriend their company to produce the movie cha-ching cha-ching sha if y'all had noticed i'm from louisiana that's a little creole right there for you i'm sorry it just come out it just come out of nowhere <laughs> cha-ching sha 
So they are pretending that they don't know anything. Oh, just wait until I go through these IRS records. I know that's the that's the you know the episode you guys were expecting today. I'm gonna get to it a little bit later after the Saints beat the Chiefs. Not the Chiefs. They're not playing the Chiefs. They're playing the Chargers. They're playing the not the San Diego Chargers anymore, but the Los Angeles Chargers. Oh, I got a lot to say. I've been doing a lot of digging. And you know what? I'm not I'm not an advocate for violence or anything like that, but I tell you one thing. <laughs> it's, you know, it amazes me that, you know, this woman <laughs> that I don't know. I, I should leave that alone. I sh- yeah, I should leave that alone. I should leave that alone, Cher. <laughs> but I tell you one thing. In certain spaces, this lady would have had enough hair on the floor to make a mule a wig when some people I know got done with her. There would, would have been enough hair on the floor to make a mule a wig. That's for sure. I had to take a second look at his comments in light of the new information that I discovered. It's absolutely crazy. There were things back in 2020, 2021 that they were like, you know, if you guys give me this much, then I won't go public with things. And uh... Well, could it be it was because he discovered that his fake brother and his fake sister may have very well been in on it from the beginning. Because remember back then in 2008 and nine, Cannon and Collins were dating, you know, cause they were, you know, young teenagers at this time they were dating. So they weren't married yet. They just got married six years ago after dating for like 11 years. Right. So could it have been, could it have been that Michael Orr discovered that, Back then, this was all a plan. This was all a plot. Because remember, Michael Lewis wrote the book first. Childhood friend of Sean Tui. Fast forward a year. Now, all of a sudden, it's being made into a movie. I mean, the ball was rolling very quickly. And no other than his fake sister, her boyfriend, who is the son of the founder of FedEx and they have a movie production company that, you know, his sister, they get the movie. They produce the movie. All con entertainment is funded by her boyfriend's father. It is her sister, sister in law. Pardon me. They get the movie and you're telling me that none of that money Cause you know, producing, you know, the producers get the money. The actors get a little bit of it, but you know, but <laughs> you're telling me that she hands her boyfriend's family, a $400 million movie and they got none of it. Could it have been because Michael Orr discovered this was, you know, may have been in my opinion, a plan from the very beginning? Could that be why he was pissed? Could that be why the relationship changed? No matter what happened with this movie, this story, pardon me, the writing of the book, let's keep everything in-house, let's keep everything family. It started from the very beginning, in my opinion. Yeah. Like a lot of mentioning of the movie and how much money it makes also kind of implies that you guys as a family were benefiting and he was not. Were, was everybody but him getting paid off of that or how'd that, the money shake out? Oh, the money shook out real good. As I stated before, along with the DVD sales, I counted up about $418 million and that didn't include merchandise. So the money, it shook out very well because again, think Sean to it, the daddy, Leanne to it, lying about adopting him. And then there's the fake siblings right there. Everybody benefited. And then she, the sister hands the story right over to her boyfriend's family. 
they are already billionaires. They're already, you know, the founder of FedEx. This is his son. But she hands it over to that family. And 11 years later, I guess so, because if my daughter handed over $400 million to another family, you damn right he going to marry her. <laughs> I'm, just joking. I'm just joking. But 11 years later, he finally married her. She handed their family a shitload of money. Now, I don't know what the, you know, what the percentage was, but I can tell you what I discovered about another movie that they did. La La Land. You know, this was highly successful. La La Land. And they had a 26% stake in La La Land, which I think was somewhere around $7.8 million. And that movie made about $400 million. So they, I think they recouped, you know, their, in, you know, initial investment and made about $116 million. So here's the question. What was the percentage that the Smiths, FedEx, what was their percentage off of this movie? Was it 26% like La La Land? Was it 2.5% like the Tuies? What was their percentage? I can tell you that I think it was a lot higher than that. He really gets nervous at this point. Pay attention to what he says and what he doesn't say. It's important what he doesn't say. More important than what he does say. Now, and I, I don't want to take too much thunder. And I don't know if I can legally say this, but legally say this. But legally say this. But there's an article being written in the Atlantic with a couple guys that were really, really. Article being written in the Atlantic with a couple guys that were really, really. Uh, understand the finances of, of that situation really well and, and that that will be a uh, something to, to look for but so i already know what this article is going to say it's going to blame everything on the studio but what he's not saying is that the studio is his sister's family her husband's family her sister-in-law's company no I, i've never once talked about truthfully um how much money I have made off, off the movie. Truthfully and honestly, these are what you call qualifiers. People often use these when they're lying. Um, but candidly, I don't, I don't care how much. It's, it's going to be public record for that article anyway. But um, for years, I remember when I got the first check from the University of Arkansas. We were in Memphis and I, we were. We were uh... So in my opinion, if you want to shield any scrutiny, if you want to get around all of the the blowback that you're going to get from, in my opinion, collecting the lion's share of the money, then what you do is you divert it over to some other place. You divert it to people that you can trust. You divert it in a way that the money stays in the family. Because all of this was a, this was a family affair, in my opinion. Michael Lewis writing the book, and then the fake sister, her boyfriend's family actually producing the company that they fund produced the movie. This is not my opinion. This is fact. I went all the way back to 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12. But they didn't benefit from it, okay? If you listen to the word salad that SJ, you know, Tui is playing with. I'm trying not to give me a legal recruiting implications. What? Trying not to give me a legal recruiting implications. A legal recruiting implication? I was around my house at the time, and I met my dad for, for lunch, and uh, he gave me a check, and I'm like, we get paid off this thing? We get paid off this thing? We get paid off this thing? He's like, yeah, it's Nate. He's like, yeah, it's Nate. It's made so much money now that, like, they yeah, can't it's hide it. It's made so much money now that, like, they can't hide it. I think, I think there was, like, a 2.5% um, kicker. Down the line again, that'll be and it'll be public, so someone that really cares to, to go back and read through it. Can, can do so, so look at how he just downplayed receiving a pretty sizable check. He's trying to pretend that fourteen thousand dollars isn't any money. Sixty to seventy thousand dollars over the last couple of years isn't any money. Well, I guess it's you know it's not any money. Fourteen thousand dollars that's like pocket change. If they made the kind of money that I think, and this is just my opinion, hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, yeah, $14,000. That's no money. That's why he's so nonchalant. But he's really the actor. They need to put him in some of those movies that they're producing. 
SJ is quite the actor pretending like he doesn't have a clue what all corn is. And he full well knows. There's no way he can't know. I'm a married woman and I have sister-in-laws and in-laws and they kind of know what's going on with my family. I know what's going on with theirs. You know, with theirs, you mean to tell me that your only sister is dating the founder of FedEx, his son, and they have, uh, you know, a production company, her sister-in-law. And they get the movie and you don't know that there's some sort of familial relationship there and some sort of connection with the company that is producing a story that y'all have made it about y'all's life. But the the central figure in the story really is Michael or it's about his life. And all this, you know, nonsense about well, there was a two hundred thousand dollar donation or four hundred thousand. I think that in my opinion, this was all part of a plan. These are planners. These are plotters. I think this, you know, all of that was to throw things off to make Michael or seem like, you know, listen, nobody's making any money, but they're going to make a donation to the foundation and wait till I get to those foundation records tonight. Oh, I'm going to finish it tonight. It's 104 degrees. I don't think I'm going out tonight. Even when it cools off about eight o'clock, it's going to be too hot for me to step out to do anything. I will finish the next episode tonight. These IRS records are a hot mess. It seems like to me, no matter what money circles right back to them, money that should be going to people that are in need. There is no way in hell that a foundation should spend two, three times the amount of money that they're giving out on management fees. <laughs> you know, crazy stuff. I don't think this boy could have broken up with her if, she, you know, if he wanted to. Just imagine that handing your boyfriend's family a blockbuster movie that grossed hundreds of millions of dollars and Michael Orr gets nothing, nothing. Oh, wait, he got a photo op. I'm sorry. He did get something. He got a photo op. I wonder who made those caps. Um, and, and I bet through that, we've probably, we as in um, me personally only, because I can, can speak for that. Have been Oops. He said we. Then he straightened that up. He cleaned that up. He said, oh, no, I. He met my sister and I. Like 60, 70 grand over the course of the last four or five years. It comes in like the first year was like a $14,000 check. And then it was like an eight and seven, and whatever, so on, so forth down. That math didn't add up. But it, was, it started off a little higher and then it went down. Um which after it made hundreds of millions of dollars, I think that someone said, okay, we can't hide this any longer. The money he's doing for is, is actually. So SJ, why don't you tell your friend there, the one that was defending you, the one that was so mad that the book came out on the same day as the lawsuit. Why don't you tell him that that someone, when somebody said the movie's making a lot of money, that it was probably your sister. It was her family. It was her husband and her father-in-law. I think it'll be very well documented. It was, uh, I was reading through this morning, but. Uh, as a couple hundred grand that the movie actually gave us, I don't remember the timeline because I was young and I wasn't involved. For is, is actually the same thing. It'll be very well documented. It was uh, I was reading through this morning, but uh, as a couple hundred grand that the movie actually gave us, I don't remember the timeline because I was young and I wasn't involved. But so, and guess what? I have to go and research the good lie. Because this is a story about somebody that they saved, that they rescued, just like they say they saved Michael Orr, although he was a five-star recruit when they met him. You see what just happened there. He put out some information that he knows that the public is going to dig up. So the movie, the studio actually donated two hundred thousand dollars to his family um. i tried to understand you know why did michael ducker fedex why he donated a hundred shares of stock to the foundation instead of just writing them a check for cash because at that time i didn't understand the connection between fedex and the tui family i didn't understand that the founder of fedex his son cannon was dating the fake sister at the time. So I didn't understand, 
you know, what the relationship was. Why would they ever donate, you know, 100 shares of stock to the foundation? Why, you know, why, you know, why did things look the way they did? But now I get it. I understand. Had it not been for, you know, Michael Orr filing this probate and I stand corrected. It's not a law. I'm not a lawyer, y'all. It's not a lawsuit. It's a probate. That's the correct term for it. But it feels like a lawsuit. Oh, it feels like one. It smells like one. And it's and it's giving lawsuit, but it's technically a probate. OK, so I stand corrected on that part. But I didn't understand the connections, but now I do. And later tonight, I'm going to go over all of the donations as soon as the New Orleans Saints beat <laughs> the San Diego Chargers. Just look at all of this. I uncovered all of this, all of these articles about the production company. Do you know how close one is to, you know, sometimes, not all the time, but how close you are to a sister-in-law? So you mean to tell me that your sister-in-law produced the movie? Collins Tui Smith, your sister-in-law produced the movie? Your father-in-law funds Alcon. But your family didn't benefit at all. Is this some sort of technicality? Because Cannon and, and Collins weren't married at the time, but they've dated for 11 years and now they're married. <laughs> Hilarious. The money? Yeah, so not, not personally from the, the money... Like when the movie came out, we got paid off the naming rights, we got like twelve grand, and then off those same naming rights, ten years later, me personally got fourteen thousand dollars, whatever it was, and so on and so forth. Now, but like maybe four or five years after the movie came out, and it was clear it was making a lot of money. The and I don't, you'll see this in the article, but um, I want to say Alcon, I guess someone's like, hey, you know, this is doing great, it's a great story. We're going to donate four hundred thousand dollars to charities of, of your choice. I'm sure they had to write something. Off. So let. A charity of, you know, your choice and you guys chose yourselves even to get the charitable donation, knowing full well when he says Alcon, like he doesn't even know what Alcon is. Do you honestly think that he doesn't or have never met his sister's sister-in-law? These people are family. And trust me, there are photographs because, you know, people are addicted to social media. And don't don't get me wrong. I love social media, too. But, you know, some people post everything that they do every time they eat a meal. And don't, you know, I'm not saying nothing against the meal, you know, food, food, social media, you know, because I, I love I'm a foodie, too. But. He's acting like he should I should I go back and pull up, you know, I have a little folder with photographs. Should I go back and pull up all of these pictures of family together that don't seem to know what the other you know does you know when you meet people the first thing you say hey what do you do what's your profession so you don't think that he understands that his sister his only sister that her sister-in-law that that's Al Karn you know although you know she's broken off and she's done her you know black uh, what is it called black label media you know how you know you want a little, little bit of independence from daddy I get it same stuff, same people. That would be like me breaking off from, you know, my husband and saying, you know, hey, I have this company, but, you know, this is mine. This is, you know, I have company A and he has company B, but, you know, we're all part of the same umbrella, really. Um, and they did 200 to my family's foundation, the Making It Happen Foundation, and then Mike's was going to be 200 separately. Uh, and you wonder why Mike said, no, nah, y'all go ahead and keep that. I don't even want it. I don't even want it. And it's super well documented. Uh, and it's super well documented. That, that he was in the middle of playing, too, so I get, he had a lot going on at the time. That probably wasn't a time late to him, but he was like, I don't want to be involved with that. I don't want the money from it, and, and declined the exact money that I think is mentioned. And I, I get, I, Look at how he's downplaying that. I think it was the exact money that he's talking about. 
So let me make sure I understand this correctly. When it came to Michael Orr, he was offered charity, a charitable donation, a donation. But when it came down to the Tuies and their children, they were contractually obligated to pay them. So Michael Orr is an option. He's charity. He's donation. But the two is when it comes down to them and their children, it is a contract. But his sister, his fake sister, her family, her boy, her now husband, but at that time, her boyfriend, their family, they get the production deal on the movie. They get the production deal on the movie. So black label. I don't, know, I don't know if it's all corn or al corn or, you know, what the it is. The reason why he's coming out with this now, because there are a lot of questionable donations. I've looked at 10 years worth of records. Before people make their decisions on this case, on the ESPN, read it, make your up your own mind. That's all you can do in stuff like this. And I will say, uh, Kevin and I were talking. We didn't think in a million years you would actually come on because there's a court case. And generally, my experience in doing this in 20 years, and it could be wrong, people who can't speak freely will not go on to something like this where you don't know where the conversation's going. Mm -hmm. It Anything you say is on the record. Yeah. To me, that generally speaks volumes to somebody coming up. And this is clearly not a plan. You're, you're pretty open answering everything we're asking. Well, again, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be held against you in a court of law. He should have said nothing. This interview did more damage than it helped the situation. Like I said, I, my, our, our, my legal guy wasn't thrilled about it, but I wanted to have one thing that I could say. Now, I already said that. Um, and two, like it's, it's, I don't have any to hide from it. Uh, I wasn't named in the lawsuit, which isn't a lawsuit, it's a probate, but I haven't worked on to, but I think when my dad sold his company, that, that there was, that's when like money started being more relevant because someone put a big article out, um, you know, about that and it was unrelated, but maybe that was it. I, I, I wish there was, I knew that moment because then I could go back to it and go, whoa, whoa, whoa like let's, let's figure this thing out. I, I, I truthfully don't know that moment. Um, and it, it may not exist, so. Well, there you have it. SJ2 said that moment may not even exist. 